So today's lesson is going to be all about amplifiers. Before we talk about how to, to analyze and design circuits involving amplifiers, let's understand why we would care to do that. Because it turns out that amplifiers are very important components for electrical and computer engineers. Uh, you know, I won't read the list here of all of the different things that involve amplifiers, but think about the fact that many times electrical and computer engineers work with things that operate at a distance. So if there's a remote sort of operation, uh, maybe that's like a, a radio station transmitting remotely to a radio player, or it's uh, I'm communicating remotely with a weather satellite, or I'm, I'm, uh, uh, I have a, a stereo system set up where the speaker is more than a zero distance away from my ear. Anytime that you have anything that's remote, that distance is going to cause the signal to, to attenuate or to decrease in strength with the distance as it moves through the distance. In the same way, if I'm talking to you from you know two feet away, we can have an easy conversation. But if we're 200 feet away, we're going to have to yell to be able to, to, to be heard by the other person. So anytime that you have this sort of attenuation, you're going to need to balance that by an amplification. So as the, as the things get quieter and quieter and quieter, you need to amplify them so they come back up to the right level. And that's really why amplifiers are so important to electrical and computer engineers because we do an awful lot of things over a distance. That's something that is kind of unique for, for electrical and computer engineers is that our work often uh, occurs over a distance. Now, it turns out that basically every type of amplifier is going to be based on a transistor, uh, but there are many different types of transistors, and for every one of those, there are many different types of amplifiers. I've just shown you a few examples here of, of amplifiers. This one, by the way, might look familiar. This is similar to the circuit we used to, uh, to, to drive the DC motor in an earlier lab. But I just wanted to give you an idea of the fact that, that you will eventually learn how to do these things. Uh, in your junior year, you'll take an entire course on amplifier design called Electronics. Electronics 1, and for the electrical engineers in the crowd, Electronics 2, uh, will we'll really focus on, on transistors and diodes and, and similar types of devices. So that's something that you can look forward to. But for today, we're not going to be working on transistor amplifiers. Transistor amplifiers are, are sort of like, that's, that's hard mode. That's kind of like the, the more advanced type of material. We're going to talk about operational amplifiers. Now, operational amplifiers are kind of the simpler version of an amplifier. It's kind of like a lot of the hard work has gone into the design of the op amp itself. Op amp is just short for operational amplifier. And therefore, that makes our job uh, using the op amps quite a bit simpler. So what you can see here, I've, I've got a, a circuit diagram here that shows exactly what is inside of a particular op amp. Now, it turns out this is the op amp we're going to use in lab this week. Uh, but it, it contains 25 transistors. Now, the most complicated circuit that I've ever designed involved three or four transistors, so I just can hardly even imagine how, how smart the people must have been who designed this, this op amp circuit in the first place. But for just, for just 25 cents, we can have a circuit that requires only eight pens and has 25 transistors and does some really remarkable stuff. And, and the two things that you need to know most are that op amps have a very high input impedance. Now, input impedance is, is a very important thing to electrical and computer engineers, but we haven't really talked about it very much. What this really means is that you're not going to draw very much current into the device. That basically it's like, it's, it's, uh, imagine, you know, it's like uh, if somebody, if you owed somebody money and they were like, no, no, I couldn't possibly take that money. And you keep on trying to push the money at them. Like, no, I will not take it. Uh, and, and, and that's a high input impedance, no matter how hard you push, they simply won't accept the money. And, and no matter how hard the voltage pushes, this op amp will not accept the current. No current really can essentially flow into an op amp circuit. Uh, maybe a very tiny amount of current, microamps can flow, but for our purposes, it's going to be approximately zero. That's a very important thing to know about op amps is that they have a very high input impedance and therefore approximately zero input current. An op amp also has a very large amplification factor or gain. In fact, the circuit that's shown in figure two is guaranteed to have an amplification factor of at least 200,000. So if I sent just one volt, all, all other things being equal, if I sent just one volt into the input of that circuit, it would guarantee to deliver 200,000 volts at the output. Now, of course, that's completely impossible. It would burn up the circuit and, and destroy our breadboard. But if I sent in one microvolt, you get 200,000 microvolts out or 0.2 volts out. And that, that's, a, that's, that's something that's actually somewhat reasonable. So it turns out that op amps are, are, are such important and self-contained devices that they have their own symbol. And so you can see here, the, uh, and the sort of the symbol on the right is the basic symbol for an op amp. It has uh, two terminals, 
Uh, and of course, the triangular shape is reminiscent of an inverter, but it's not the same at all. Uh, in fact, it's completely unrelated. Remember that an inverter has the circle or the bubble on the output here, uh, and, and, the, and the op amp has the plus and minus inside. So that's how you can tell them apart. The positive terminal here, that, that's referred to as the non-inverting input. The negative terminal, that's the inverting input. And I'll have this V plus and this V minus are, are going to be the names that I give to those two voltages. And then over here, I have V out. Now, this is, this is not showing two connections to the op amp, which are shown over here, and that's the positive and negative voltage supply. It turns out that most op amp circuits are going to require both a positive and a negative voltage supply, uh, and the output voltage cannot go outside of the range of the positive to negative voltage supply. Can't go higher than V sub S, can't go lower than negative V sub S. And so what we see here is that we have, we have, uh, we have a full symbol and we have kind of a simplified symbol right here. So uh, we can either uh, then uh, explicitly show the power supply connections or we can omit them. Uh, but but for either case, this is the equation that matters the most. The output voltage is going to be the amplification factor or the gain, A, multiplied by the difference between those two inputs. And it's always V positive minus V negative. And the reason why it's called V negative is because it has a minus sign in front of it. And the reason why it's called V positive is because it has a plus sign in front of it. So what you do is you simply take the difference between these two input voltages, you multiply them by a very large number, and you get this output voltage. And that very large number could be as large as 200,000. In the examples we're about to look at, I'm going to use a smaller, uh, a smaller gain, a smaller amplification factor. But be aware that this voltage, this voltage gain here is, is hundreds of thousands. And so it's a very, very large amplification factor. But the output voltage cannot go higher than V sub S, nor can it go lower than negative V sub S. So now it's time for you to do a, a, an example, Operational Amplifier Fundamentals example, where you're going to do a couple of quick calculations involving equation one.